Hi guys, this is Rikansh here and we're back again with our next video. Uh, today we will be covering uh, how to get into medical training in the UK. Uh, I have with me one of my very old uh, friends from college. Uh, he's done very well for himself getting through uh, MBBS postgrad and now he's uh, just about to finish his medical training in the UK. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to hand over the stage to uh, Ashutosh. Ashutosh, do you want to start off by giving us a brief introduction about yourself hi first of all thanks thanks you can't for taking the initiative i think it's a good initiative giving rmgs the uh, information and the tools to further explore more prospects of getting to the united kingdom <clears throat> so getting into it very briefly um i'm from the same batch as you as you can tell in 2007 we did our medicine together in the mbbs subsequently after my fy1 which you call as internship which i did from sir gangaram hospital you basically have to give the PLAB exams, which are the licensing exams. Uh, I gather that you've already covered that in a separate video. But mm -hmm. the main thing is the PLAB one is an MCQ based exam and the PLAB two is OSCE. Yeah. So mm -hmm. those are two exams to get your licensing. After, prior to this, obviously you need to give an English exam, which could be in the form of IELTS or OET. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, you get your GMC registration. The next step is how do you get your F2 competencies? Now, mm -hmm. there are a few posts. Um, which are deciphered as or described as a junior clinical fellow, or you might hear the words SHO or F2 equivalent, or even F2 LAT, which is a locum appointment for training. Now, essentially, there are these are the various methods of which you get your competency signed off. Keep an eye, every year, these competencies do get updated. So uh, the form can be found on ORIEL generally, which is the main mm -hmm. port, O-R-I-E-L. Mm -hmm. And essentially that's we'll the main- link. We'll, we'll put a link down to the competency form below this video, guys. Perfect. Excellent. So that's where you can find the competent, general competencies for every year. Now, bear in mind, these um, competency forms are generally have to be signed by someone who's supervising you as a consultant mm -hmm. in the United Kingdom, uh, mainly in the United Kingdom at this point of time. And that's your next path of applying for internal medicine training, aka IMT. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was doing my medical training or residency, it was known as co-medical training, which is a two-year process of, you know, for lack of better words, residency in the UK. Now uh -huh. that's been three years, known as internal medicine training. So just uh, to make it clear, you get through MBBS, you do your F1, F2, and then you uh, give the PLAB exams to get your IMT years slash, which used to be the CT earlier. Absolutely, spot on, absolutely. The core medical training is now known as IMT, previously mm -hmm. two years, and now it's become three years. Okay, uh, so uh, you now do it for three years, so you're essentially designated as an SHO for those three years. Yes, so you, uh, in terms of the old terminology, it's known as a senior house officer, absolutely, as an okay. SHO. Yeah. Um, and now, I mean, basically in the training post, they call this an IMT. Okay, and how do you then progress on further from the uh, post of an SHO. So what happens in IMT now? Also, uh, I think I need to focus on one part. The portfolio has become a bit more pragmatic in the sense that the competencies have become more generic in terms of how you lead a ward round. Are you able to discharge patients safely? Uh, are you able to ca carry off a geriatric comprehensive assessment? So it's more about a holistic approach rather than a specific competency-based approach. For example, it's not about chest pain or shortness of breath, it's a more broader based approach, if, okay. if, that, if that makes any sense. So if and who is this form signed off by? Is it signed off by your supervisor? So if you once you get into IMT, you automatically get access to an online portfolio, which is uh, sponsored or provided mm -hmm. rather by the JRCPTB, which is the Joint okay. Royal College Physicians Training Board. Okay. And that's how you get your competency signed off, which can be by various consultants, your supervisors, you have regular meetings. So it's quite a structured format behind it. And it's done over a period of three years that you have. The Absolutely. Period. Absolutely, period of three okay. years. Mm -hmm. so, and um, beyond that, so once say I've, I've done, I've got my competency, I've done my third year, what's mm -hmm. happening? Yeah, so as Ikansh uh, very correctly pointed out, and, uh, after the IMT, that's when you need to find out what's your particular passion. So for me, it was endocrine and diabetes. Somebody mm -hmm. might be cardiology. Uh, you finish this IMT, you get those generic competencies and IMT competencies signed off, and then you're eligible to apply for ST training, known as specialist training in the United Kingdom. Uh, 
And my time, it used to be from ST3 to 7. Uh, obviously, if it's self-explanatory that from IMD3, it's going to be ST4 to ST7 now. Uh, most of the specialties, when I say most, I don't want to give any wrong information. So most of the specialties now are diverting towards getting a general medicine approach as well. So you are most of the specialties, when I mean approach, you're basically having two accreditations. One is a specialty and you're dual accrediting in general internal medicine as well. Okay. So essentially that's when you're classified as being, including IMT3 being a medical registrar, okay. including IMT3 by the way. Uh, but from ST4, you start doing a specialty. So for example, somebody who wants to go for cardiology goes for that, for endocrine goes for that. Essentially it's an IMT, IMT where you need to hone or you know focus on your portfolio to show your commitment to that particular specialty in which you want to get okay. into. So do you have to set an exam to make the jump up from uh, IMT3 to ST4? You know, excellent point. So MRCP exams mm -hmm. are a prerequisite, which means MRCP part one and mm -hmm. part two and paces. So it's mm -hmm. three exams which form part of the MRCP UK degree. Yep. And that's a prerequisite to clear to enter ST training. Okay, so you must finish off in your IMT three years, three years yeah. of IMT or MRCP one, two, and your paces must all be done. To enter ST4, yes. And then, so then do you sit an interview at that point? So in my time, we had two years to complete the exams, uh, mm -hmm. exams and then enter ST training. Yes, again, when you enter ST training, it's a different interview altogether. So okay. actually, that's a very good point, Ikansh. I must have skipped through it. To enter core training, you've got an interview process. Mm -hmm. Let's come to the entry criteria, exactly. So when you're applying an ORIO, there's a whole eligibility criteria and evidence portfolio that you build, which means mm -hmm. it's, it's a combination of research, publications, something called audits, which is information mm -hmm. and data collection and improvements on that basis. Mm -hmm. What's happening now is audits are now going towards something called as a quality improvement project. QI so projects, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So they're going to the QI project, which has this smart uh, method of methodology of uh, yeah. formulation, which is basically specific, measurable, achievable, and something that you could provide. Yeah, the time. standard. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you finish so you all the boxes, you sit an interview, and based yeah. on how well you do on the interview, you the get the desired subspecialty or not. <clears throat> the yeah. conversion, uh, what is the, do you have a ratio? How many are <clears throat> So for you doing, say you're doing endocrine and diabetologist, obviously it's something which is very sought after. What's the trainee applicant to uh, trainee ratio in your specialty? So exact ratios don't come to mind, but the encouraging part is right now, there's mm -hmm. a huge demand and there's a huge demand for anyone who wants to come to UK for internal medicine. Okay. Uh, one because so it's, generally a very, it's a very open field at this point. And they're very welcoming. At this point, yes. Okay. However... Uh, this year, for some reason, endocrine diabetes became quite fairly competitive. Cardiology has been a competitive one. The other competitive ones are the ones which you wouldn't think as such in back in home countries, but dermatology, that's a really competitive one. I mean, that's sought after everywhere, I think. You have the lifestyle branch. People have done PhDs and stuff, and then they go for applying for dermatology. So, because there is a better work life balance as well. Understandable. Um, okay, so moving on. So, we say we've I've, get, I've got into training, I get through four years. That this in during these four years, I'm working with a focus on the subspecialty that I want to uh, yes. get out in. <clears throat> Excuse me. No. I don't set any more exams at this period because I, to my understanding, the FCP is an honorary degree that you're given or conferred 10 years on uh, from having achieved your MRCP, right? Yes. So FRCP is something that you get bestowed upon or nominated for rather. Um, yes when you've obviously contributed a significant amount of field, there yeah. is one exam actually, um, which I myself have also completed. It's, uh, but it's specialty dependent. So okay. gastroenterology have got their own exam, cardio has got their own exam, endocrine had their own exam. It's something called SCE, which is a okay. specialty certificate examination. It's an exit exam. Okay, so there so is an exit exam. exam. Yeah, there How is exam. Uh, challenging is this exit exam generally? So, I can speak for endocrine because I know mm -hmm. that better. Absolutely, absolutely. Obviously, other specialties would be best approach to this. Yes. Um, it's a single year paper. It, it's actually online. It's actually given in Pearson View, which is one of the... Yeah, yeah. So is it an MCQ-based or is yeah, it OSCE-based? 
It's an MCQ okay. base, pure MCQ base, okay. no negative marking. And uh, it's all testing diabetes and endocrine, all, you know, essentially the level that they expect is your knowledge should, should be at the level of exiting the- D1 when you, Exactly, D1 when you're, exactly, when you're approaching. Okay, fair enough. And to my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, mm -hmm. generally you don't require a fellowship as you do in surgical fees. You can do a fellowship if you have a certain uh, focused interest in a certain subspecialty post your training and this ex ex uh, exit exam. And generally it is reasonably, uh, well, I won't say the word easy, but easier as compared to some other fields to get a consultant job. Is that correct? To, to be honest, at this point of time, I mean, again, not exact number, but there are a lot of surveys out there that lots of places, especially in the United Kingdom, there are lots of consultant posts still available. Um, okay. And you, you know, the prospects are good. Obviously, I'm going to save and I do get Guys, listeners, uh, don't don't miss this. You have to get into medicine. It's going to become much easier than orthopedics. Believe me on that. Yeah, definitely. And there's a huge demand. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to say much to the, until I get my uh, my consultant post. So let's wait for that. Maybe that soon. Hopefully, fingers crossed. But um, yeah, I, I think in, in addition to the SC exam and the exit exam, the prerequisite is you have to have attempted it once by ST5. And okay. generally, when you're so exposed with the robust training program that is in the UK, Usually most trainees clear the first attempt. Most trainees clear. Understandably. Okay, so now that, that's very good. That gives us a very brief but very succinct runway to expect before you can do a consult course. Now, a very common question because a lot of our viewers are based from India and abroad. Say uh, I'm someone who's done their MD medicine from India or someone who's actually done their DM as that's well. So at what position do I enter and what do I need to enter? What do I need to do to enter? So you can't just ask a very pertinent question actually, which does pop up in a lot of groups. And I'm actually one of the MRCP part one tutors as well. So we get that in our course quite often. Mm -hmm. Essentially, it's not about knowledge. A person who's done an MD and DM from India has, has wealth of knowledge. Yeah. It's about the system. So when you come here, if somebody's clear the DM, they're at least at a registrar level. Mm -hmm. Having said that, it's a very daunting task to join immediately as a reg here because okay. the responsibilities are wholesome. You're expected to be the most senior person on an eye duty. So recommendation, personally, each one to their own, obviously capabilities. Yeah, you start off as an SHO yeah. so that you actually take some time to understand the system. Absolutely. As Good with any other field in the UK. Absolutely. You better Keep to take it. some time to get a hang of this before you step in decision making role as a registrar 100% and again every point of view every point of time it's about attaining competencies and getting to the next level okay so say if i if i've done my dm from india and i move here so am i i'm expected to do my uh, i don't have to do my plab i'm guessing by that time i just have to do my mrcp 1 2 and bases right so basically for working in the uk you have to be registered with the licensing authority okay so, so a lot of people, the, what they do is for getting themselves, you know, licensed at the GMC, the so either the is or the MRCP route. Exactly. I mean, some people, what they do is with the MD, they give MR, MRCP in India, and then they give the English language exam and then they can register. Okay. Having said that, lab is completely, well, faster is a better word. Yeah, uh, quicker because you just have to yeah. exams as compared to the MRCP. Exactly. Exactly. So if I do the PLAB as a uh, someone who's passed DM in India, at what level do I start? Say now I've done my lab, I've done my got my GMC registration. At mm. what level of training am I ex expected? Can I find myself uh, starting? Well, for starting off, you could start off in a trust wedge, but again, my recommendation would be start off as an SHO. Okay. You, I think. Yeah. So you start, start off as an SHO would be say uh, like an IMT level. Yeah, exactly. A junior clinical fellow, or, or you can call it a co-trainee, or you can call it an IMT level. Okay. And then I can try and get into training, which is kind of what you did. And the other option, if I don't get into training, if I get all my competencies, yeah. the alternative route, which is a Caesar route, that is also a possibility within medicine as, as with other fields. So I've had a few consultants who've, um, exactly as you said, they've done, they were doing renal biopsies and stuff back in Sri Lanka. So you can imagine how good they were and yeah. they got the Caesar route. So yeah, it, it, each one to their own, how, how it matters. And uh, say you get, in, you try and focus on the Caesar route. Does that also take up to, because so, you've got about four years of registrar training as a medical uh, 
is that the time period you can expect even if he goes with the caesar route or is it longer i know it's a difficult it's difficult to put a number to it however if you were to try and give a vague a rough idea to our viewers i would say from anecdotal experience from what i've spoken to people over this i think 6 7 years is what i've seen people i mean but then again each one do some people have taken understand it. understand it. but yeah i mean it 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 is expected to take slightly longer if you're going through the caesar route than if you were to get into training basically the thing is in caesar route you got to keep your own portfolio and you you you're keeping tabs on your own self understand it you have your appraisers you have your revalidation and stuff with your loc- with your local health authority who you're working mm-hmm. for uh mm-hmm. but it's not a deanry overlooking things if that makes sense really okay so that makes a lot of sense i think uh, so yeah i think we've covered kind of the whole uh, runway the alternative options is there anything that you want to add to the whole discussion that we've had uh mainly what i would like to say i think uh, gradually we've been reaching out to people and i think we've got a good chunk and cohort of manipal people over here yeah yeah we actually do over here based on alumni network we've got some of our friends anurudh has come over here as well so it's pretty yeah. it's nice to have people over here as well yeah and i mean that's one of the advantages with uk because you you you'll be surprised with how many people that you actually train through at some point in your career whether it's mbbs or uh, you know post that in india or some other countries you will actually find them in around uh, in the hospitals you've actually <clears throat> have actually known people bumping into each other several mm-hmm. later in the same hospital so that is one of the beauty of uh, the nhs slash uk system absolutely and one more thing to add in terms of sub specialty training um, there's a there's a lot of push and encouragement for going research opportunities or mm. if you want so you can taper your career in three different ways mainly or please anyone can feel free to add more as appropriate mm. teaching and a general post and research so a lot of my colleagues are going down the phd route and md route md as in thesis md in research Mm-hmm. um my aptitude is more of a teaching so i hope i go down that route some mm-hmm. people are going deep into admin and leadership so you can mm-hmm. make changes service improvements and there is a lot of scope for improvement and service improvement as well so choose whichever path you want to and succeed in that i guess that's great super um i think uh, we've covered pretty much what we intended to or we set out to cover uh just want to thank you very much ashutosh for taking the conscience it correct me if i'm wrong i think uh, you were on night duties and you still managed to uh, sit through this post your night duty so really really uh, a big thank you to you um, i'm i'm sure all of you will appreciate what you've put forward and you've uh, given them thank you and big thanks for you to uh, keep this channel going it's it's a, it's a good initiative it's really good initiative which not a lot of people are doing so excellent for thank you passing it on yeah we uh, it's something as i said we said this in our uh, earlier videos as well we we learn from our mistakes and we want others to learn from our mistakes rather than their own so so getting them the right information at the right time you can often have the right information but at a later time and then becomes hindsight we're in agreement uh, that's something we are we are trying to change or provide and hopefully people make better choices and optimize their uh, time and careers in the process um So yeah, guys, uh, we're going to be wrapping up this video. Uh, thank you for being with us. Thank you for all the support. Keep emailing us uh, with your questions at yourmentor121 at gmail dot com. You can also leave any questions or any comments in the section in the section below. We will have uh, this information again in the uh, description side. Uh, you can also find us on our website uh, doctorsinuk dot co dot in. You can also find us on Facebook. we are still working on getting up our instagram handle uh, admittedly uh, we'll stretch on that but we will have that up and running very soon um and yeah guys uh, like subscribe and do share with people hopefully uh, we can help more people like any one of you who are watching and uh, we have more we will soon have more guests coming in and covering more stuff so thank you ashutosh thank you very much again and got it today